Highway Romance Novel, Save the Galaxy, by Ariana Derrelte. Chapter 29, Jaster 6. Jaster woke up feeling awful. It seems that the days where he could stay up all night drinking tea hard down some water before bed and wake up feeling fine were long gone. He gingerly sat up. He was pretty sure he'd fallen asleep on the couch in his quarters rather than on his bed, but he was in his bed now. Patting his face, he found a flimsy plaster to one side. The ink was bleeding a little from where he had drooled on it, but it appeared to be a schematic for an ancient lightsaber. In fact, you could see from here that the small table near the couch was covered in similar such sketches of ancient weapons. He had a vague memory about him and Jan comparing changing Beskat and lightsaber forms over time after he had exhausted the Jedi's knowledge of the darksaber. He looked around for Jan, wondering if the Jedi had gone back to his own quarters and just how Jaster had gotten from the couch to the bed. He found the man sitting at the corner on the other side of the room, calf in hand. Jaster staggered to the refresher and used it before trying to scrub off the lines of ink across his face. He also found some painkillers and downed them dry. Jan handed him a cup of calf when he came over. Jaster went to his little kitchen nook area, pulled out the spice blend he favored, and dumped a spoonful into his calf. Then he headed back to the counter. You sleep, he asked. He took a sip of the calf and felt it start to burn his sinuses open. Perfect. I appear to have closed my eyes at some point after levitating you to the bed, admitted Jan. Jaster looked the man over. Not a fold of his inner robes were wrinkled or out of place despite sleeping on the couch. Was this some strange jetty power? My Verde are all going to think we've carked now, you realize. Jan gave a delicate snort, which Jaster had learned super laughing out loud in the dignified man. Good. They'll consider me off limits for a while, then. I hope they haven't been pressing you, said Jaster. He thought his Verde were doing well. Not at all. But they also aren't shielding their lust. I can ask them to wear their bouche more. Jaster offered, knowing the best car would muffle the force some. We have only a day more of travel, so it is no matter, said Jan dismissively. Jaster made a mental note to give the jetty some clan quarters, which were separate from the Verdaic orders in the compound that the hat Mando Adi called home in Kaldabe. Will do me a favor and pretend to go along with whatever I imply to Jango about us. Teasing his ad about sex was a favorite pastime of Jaster's. He just wished he was having half as much sex as Django seemed to dread thinking about. Duke looked amused and nodded his assent. Although it had taken a while for the tea hard to relax the man enough for them to talk last night, Jaster thought he had gotten some of the measure of the dignified Jetty. Underneath all the Jedi reserve was a man with a meddling boar in Yoda, two troublesome Ade and his second Padawan Jin, and his current Padawan Vosa, and estranged or evil grandchildren. It was no wonder the Jedi had drunk the tea hard like it was water. Jaster took another sip of his calf. Today would be a good time to corner your ad for a talk. Yan grimaced. This is not going to go well, he rumbled. The Jetty had awkwardly turned their conversation to raising Ade the night before. Jaster's advice had been to simply talk to her and find out her goals in life. Did she even want to be a Jedi? That had led to a rather long and rambling account of the Lost Nineteen, who were apparently the only Jedi Masters to have left the Order in recent memory. Not that the Jetty would stop anyone from leaving at any point. Another strike against anti-Jedi propaganda. But apparently it was rare for them to reach the rank of Jedi Master and still choose to leave. This meant Kamari was free to leave if she wished, and Jester wondered if that was what Jan was truly scared of. Tell you what, said Jester, you talk to your ad today, and I'll talk to mine. Django had something on his mind. In Jaster's experience, it was best to just rip the back patch off in one go. Also, who knew, maybe Django had figured out what Jedi he wanted as his red door. Coming, Jaster called after doing a quick check on his pad to see that it was Django on the other side of the door. Jaster had summoned him to his quarters when Django proved difficult to track down all morning. Django cautiously entered, eyes taking in every inch of the room. Jaster had to bite his lip to keep from laughing. His ad was obviously checking to make sure he didn't have Jan hidden away somewhere in here. Mondolo, 
said Django, coming to a stop in front of him. Jaster raised an eyebrow at the formal address, but nonetheless got up from where he had been sitting on the couch. What can I do for you, Attica? He wasn't capable of calling Django just another bird. Django thrust a pat in. This is a formal request for the command of our forces against Death Watch, Allure. Jaster took the pad. Sit, Janika, and tell me your reasoning. He sat back down himself. He certainly wasn't opposed to the idea of Django taking charge. He'd have handed over the boucher of the Mandalore years ago if he thought Django could handle the political side. Django nodded sharply, his expression that bland, stony look he got when he was actually feeling a lot. I don't want your title, Bert, but you've had me train up a few squads of grunts now. I've also led the attack as your second when that Shabamontros wasn't available. I have the experience, and the they know me. Jaster nodded his agreement, all good points. We're also getting word every day that more clans in Mondo Alde are swearing the Resonair. Rumor is that Clan Chris, maybe even Ren, might swear any day now. That had been the rumor for over a month. Aretta Kriz, their information specialist, assured him it was more likely now than it had been the first time he had heard it. Jaster would believe it when the head of clan and house Kriz or Ren swore the Rezolnair before him and not a day earlier. It's certainly not guaranteed, he said. No, said Django, but if it happens, you're going to have more support than any Mandalore in centuries. All the clan politics and Osek that wasn't dealt with during the clan wars will fall on you, and that's on top of all this stuff with the jetty. You're also doing historical research, which is taking up more of your time. Well, yes, it was, but studying history was fun, and not a chore like clan politics. But I know you'd better get any sleep. You have the Verde and our missions with no second in command for over a month, clan politics, the new Mandalorian's death watch, this jetty Osek, and your research. You're going to get sick soon if you keep running at 150%. Jaster had been trying not to think about all the balls he was juggling as Mandalore. Whenever he did, like now, he just felt incredibly weary. Say what you will about Montross, but he had been a good second in command. The work Jaster was doing now had him up until the wee hours of the morning every single day. Did you talk to Benin? Jaster asked, suddenly suspicious that their chief medic had put Django up to this. He was always going on about stress levels. No, should I have? Asked Django with a predatory smile. He had won this point. But if we really want to stop Death Watch once and for all, this campaign needs someone's full attention. I know you can need both, but you don't need to. Django was correct, but there was something he hadn't thought of. You're already my designated heir. Nobody will question me putting you in command. And if any said it was because Jaster was getting old, he'd take them outside and kick their shabs in. But it's a lot of work. You're not going to have free time to read through Jedi personal files. I wasn't going to find a door looking through files and daydreaming anyway, said Django bluntly. We need to focus on Death Watch right now. All true, but Jaster couldn't help the pang of regret that he couldn't give Django the time he needed to find the romance he craved. His ad had come so far from the angry, traumatized boy he had met on Concord Down. I'm proud of you, Janika. Boar! It was a token protest. There was a faint flash on Janika's cheeks. I am. I needed this cake in the sheds, so thank you. We'll sort the paperwork out when we hit Mariam. Django nodded, his posture finally relaxing under the straight back he had maintained since entering the room. He'd probably expected a lot more argument, but he was right. Jaster needed to distribute more of his duties so he didn't neglect something important. It hadn't escaped his notice that Django was playing to his strengths, however. So did you come up with this entire plan so you could avoid dealing with the new Mandalorians? Django bristled for a moment before he realized Jaster was teasing him. Yes, Jibble, that was my thought plan. In that band. Excellent maneuvering, then. Perhaps we'll make a politician of you yet. The look of horror his ad gave him was very satisfying. Later that day, while Jaster was making his usual rounds of the ship, he was in an empty corridor when he was slammed back first against the bulkhead. What the cork? He had his blaster out, keeping it loosely in his hand when he realized he was being approached by a teary, angry Komari Vosa. You! Is there a reason you're attacking me, Vosa? He asked coldly, trying to decide what part of her to shoot non lethally if she didn't back off. The invisible hand holding him against the wall loosened as it dawned on her what she was doing. Fresh tears appeared in her eyes, but Jaster didn't love her plaster. 
I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. It's just, will you promise to take care of him the way I would have? Mama Saver, my angry, confused teenagers. Did she have a crush on Dooku? Her boar! Your boar is his own person and has never been interested in you that way. Of that, Chaster could be totally certain. He was not even sure the man was interested in sex or love at all, but they had at least become friends in the past few days. She saw, but Jaster didn't let himself be moved by the display. I'll be telling him about this and recommending you get therapy. She nodded all the anguish of the heartbroken teenager on her face. She bowed again low at the waist. I offer my apologies, Mandalore, she fled. Jaster stood there for a long moment before remembering to holster his blaster. Kara, he was not looking forward to telling Jan about this. He definitely didn't have enough tea har left for the conversation.